Today on Game Ball, hosted by Matt Samantia, we have Cameron Peoples, running back from Appalachian State. He ran for over 1,000 yards this past season and 12 total touchdowns. How you doing, man? Doing good, man. How you? Uh, doing pretty well. Like I said, a pretty busy day. I, you know, I've been I've been helping run some AAU tournaments, and other than that, it's been it's been pretty good, pretty good. That's what's up. But uh, to start things off, you know, looking back at last season, like I mentioned, you had an incredible year, and it was the first time you were kind of like the you know the main running back is before Darrington Evans was there, and he was obviously great at App State. But what allowed you to have so much success this year, and how did you come back so easily from uh, your knee injury despite COVID being an issue too? Um, I think uh, for me, you know, looking back at the season, um, my coaches believed in me whenever another guy uh, went down. You know, they they believed in me going out there and just to have the confidence and that I could go out there and handle the offense. My O-line did a fantastic job throughout the year. Um, my trainers will always, you know, keep me on track with, you know, the whole process, especially – after the injury and the COVID issue hit, and they would just kind of always guide me. Uh, so I give them a lot of credit, you know, helping me throughout the you know, whole ACL process and just making sure I stayed positive, kept my head up. And, you know, when the season came, I was ready. And, you know, my coaches, like I said, my coaching staff believed in me, my position coach, my head coach, and, you know, they never doubted me for a second. You know, I think that just helped my confidence whenever I started stepped on the field that you know, I could go out there and handle the job. And I just looked at it as the same game I've been playing since I was four years old, so nothing different. Yeah, definitely. You know, you were able to have a, a great first game back, to say the least. You know, you played against Charlotte, and you rushed for 100 yards and a touchdown. And, you know, you obviously had a great performance uh, in, in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. But, you know, I think this was, you know, a game against Charlotte was probably one of the, at least in my opinion, one of the more impressive ones, just because I know that it can be, you know, difficult coming back from an injury and having that in the back of your mind. To, be able to play on it so you know you know what was it like that first game back though was it just like were you nervous like worried about me getting cut here or there and potentially hurting it again uh, uh honestly it was uh it was weird because it was a game time decision on whether i should wear a brace or not because it was gonna be my first time not wearing one and i was like you know what now nah, i'm not gonna wear it i don't want to be held back and so I got out there, you know, my first series, and I was just – all I'm thinking is, is, like, I'm excited. You know, I can't wait. And I remember just busting, like, a a nice seven-yard run. I was like, all right, okay. And I felt good. And then, you know, every time I got the ball, it was just, you know, just that feeling of, dang, I miss, you know, playing. I miss being out here, you know. And it wasn't no fans or nothing, but, like, just having that, that feeling of competition and – just going out there and just running. And I was like, man, I, I missed this. And, you know, I just so much success. And, you know, my my, it, it, my legs still felt a little weird, but, you know, I didn't I didn't worry about it too much. And I think that's what kind of, you know, kept me going is not really – I wasn't too worried about, oh, if I cut like this, you know, I might mess it up. I, I, didn't, I didn't think about it at all. I just got out there and started playing. Definitely, definitely. Well, that's great to hear that you're able to, you know, play with such confidence despite that. And, you know, another game that stood out to me was the uh, Coastal Carolina game. And, you know, obviously that was a tough loss for you guys. But uh, Coastal is a great team, as we all saw this past year. But you ran for 180 yards, two scores against probably, in my opinion, one of the better defensive lines uh, in the nation, you know, led by Teron Jackson, and Jeff Gunter. So, you know, how were you able to, you know, again, a kind of repetitive question, but, you know, what was it the game plan going in for you? get the ball run <laughs> nah honestly though but like that's the uh that was like the first game where it was like my first start so um just like that first charlotte game you know that first start like that was my first college start so i'm like all right you know everybody's looking at me you know everybody was counting on me because we're a big run team so and i my very first carry just bust out the gate and soon like right then all my confidence was just up and you know i felt I felt good, and um, but yeah, it was a tough loss, and I had that's probably like I think the best first half of the season that I had, and you know, the results weren't what we wanted, but you know, got to keep going. Yeah, definitely. Well, hey, at least you're playing them at home this year, Pack Stadium. Hopefully, you know, maybe uh, maybe things will be different there. But, oh, it's uh, definitely gonna be different. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. let's let's see it. Let's hope so. Um, but you know, I. Again, I bet everyone's asked you this, you know, everybody and their brother, this game put you on the map, the Myrtle Beach Bowl game, you know, you rushed for over 300 yards, 
five scores and you just couldn't be stopped. You know, you helped beat North Texas. You know, if you took away all the other points, you would still would have been them just on your scores alone, you know, be able to put up five touchdowns. But, you know, again, like you really showed that you could take over for Darrington Evans and help App State a lot. You know, what was that game like for you and how can you carry this momentum into next year? Um, that game was actually just crazy because going into it the whole week, um, we had a goal of getting me to 193 rushing yards, and that would have been my highest. That was my career high. Um, something I haven't did yet, and something that was obviously achievable from watching the film and just being like, okay, well, this is the plays we feel like a word. You know, they allowed this many big runs. They allowed this many rushing games for rushing yards a game. So, like, going into it, I was just like, all right, you know, 193, 193. It's, it's written all over the, the facility. It's in the training room. It's in my room. Like, the coaches text me every day, 193. Like, and that's just – that was the whole – nobody – no coach said anything to me that week but 193. Anytime somebody said something, it was 193. That's it. <laughs> and it just announced, like, okay, so – and – uh we get into the, I think it's like right at the end of the half, I broke like a long run. I'm at like 130 something yards and we just come out in the second half. I bust another one and then just kept going and kept going. And my, I, I don't really, I look back at it and like, everybody's like, Oh, Cam, like you did this. And I'm like, well, like, you know, I, I really, my old line was just, I think they was on a whole nother level because they was going crazy. Like everything was just opening and, you know, it was just, it was just a great, a, a great job of, front by them and I think for me to uh, be able to execute and them being able to execute and just going into next year um it's like a I feel like it's a target now mm-hmm. like a, I'm a pretty pretty much like the whole Sun Belt kind of knows like you know this guy Cam is probably going to be like you know he's this type of guy we got to slow him down and and it's, it's nothing I'm not used to. Like, I, in high school, that's pretty much it, how it was every game from freshman year to or from sophomore year to hot senior year. So um, I like the pressure. I like the I like the eyes to be ready and, you know, kind of focused. And, you know, it, it opens up opportunities for my other teammates. And then, you know, they start to focus on them. And then, you know, I, I sneak back in. And I just uh, – I'm looking to expand my game a lot more. Um, a lot more versatility, a lot more um, – pull a lot more tricks out of the bag, you know, mm-hmm. um, so that I'm more of a versatile person. I can be used in the passing game and, you know, better. I'm more than just a downhill runner. But I'm definitely a downhill runner, but I can do a lot more for my athletic ability. You know, I just can't – I can't wait to showcase that. Yeah, definitely. No, I guess I'm going to start texting you with 318. You know, you have to have 318 yards now during <laughs> one game, right? Or else the season's a mess. But, uh, you know, you mentioned you like the attention, or I, I guess not attention, but the recognition of showing that you are a good player and having teams prepare for you, still destroying them. But, uh, you know, something going off of that, there's there's this guy who, who I guess he's on Twitter, and he he has he runs a – he's a 24-7 sports expert, you know, the the great website that, you know, rec- you know ranks high school and college recruits and such. And he kind of went viral for making the top 50 lists for each, the top 50 players returning at each position in college. And mm-hmm. he ranked you at number seven. Uh, you know, I don't know if you noticed or not, but he put you at number seven ahead of players like Tanks Bigby, who, you know, who's from Auburn, Zamir White from Georgia. So, you know, you definitely are getting recognition and people are recognizing your talent. So how does this help motivate you even more to be like, yeah, I am better than those guys and show that you are as talented as people say you are? Um, it's just, you know, I try not to look at it too much, but in my head, my confidence, I, I know, you know, how good I am. And, you know, I feel like app doesn't get a lot of the respect that it deserves. And, you know, for me to be able to, you know, get some of that respect, um, I try to not to t- turn it more into just a me show, but like, it's definitely, you know, app has a lot to do with the success that I have and, my old line and you know I wouldn't be nothing without those guys but you know I'm just I'm I'm looking at it as you know this is the platform that I've been waiting for and this is the platform that app definitely deserves and uh I'm gonna make the most out of it I'm gonna I, I think I'm top five 
in the country for sure. Mm. Top two, not two. And I'm, I can go. Yeah, top two, not two, <laughs> definitely. And I and I just you know, yeah, I'm a I'm a different, I'm a rare type of back with my size and my speed and my length, and I just like to use that to my advantage. And I I'm going to use the platform as best I can. You know, hopefully, um, it leads to a lot more in the future. And there's not really too much to say about it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mentioned your size and, uh, you know, everywhere size, you're 6'2", I think you're 210. But I, uh, I noticed before I did this interview that you're, one of your goals this year is to, there's obviously, I guess, is to add some more weight. I hit 220. You know, how, how oh, I'm already real. You're there. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> so, like, how, how will having that extra weight, being, I guess, be stronger and such, how, how can that help you out more as, as a running back field, you know? Um, really on paper, that's kind of like, Six two two twenty, and then like, dang, he moving like that, like. But, uh, kind of, I can, I guess, I could throw like throw my body around a little more. Um, two ten was good, like I did good with it, and probably really with the pads on, you really don't tell the difference. But you know, I want to be more of like a bulldozer and tight. You know, I is. And I said this when I first got to college, you know, I was going to be hard to tackle. I told my teammates that too. I'm like, you know, fall camp, I'm not going to be the, I'm not going down with just one person. Like mm-hmm. it's not, it's not easy around here. Like, so um, definitely wanted to get that weight and be able to move around with it. And that's because that's just like a scary sight for a linebacker to just be back there and see 6'2", 220, big guy not scared to you know run somebody like run through somebody run over somebody and and then not even that just zoom by you like like it's nothing right. so um I think it's definitely like a a good thing to see on paper and a hard thing to handle in the field yeah yeah for sure you know I guess kind of pivoting off of that uh you know I guess the, another thing that changes off is not necessarily with you but with the team uh, you know Zach Thomas entered the draft Hopefully, you know, everything has worked out for him. But you have a quarterback change, having Chase Bryce come in now uh, and projected to be the starter for you guys uh, after playing at Duke for a season. And so, you know, you're going to kind of be the, you know, help him kind of take the reins now of the offense. So how how is the, how can you help him to get to learn the offense more? And how do you think it's going to help your team? Uh, well, one thing I know about Chase is he is very uh, attentive. He, he gets – he's in the playbook and he kind of – He's he's taking that he's taking that role very seriously as a leader, and he's he's a lot more he's like a lot more vocal than I am. Um, but you know, there's been some moments where you know he kind of looks at me for some guidance, and you know I try to help him best I can. I'm, but you know, with the the switch in with the coaches and learning the offense again and again and again, you know. But it, this offense, I kind of already knew since it was um, the coach from Louisville who came back, Coach Ponce. And, uh, you know, just kind of just guiding them, you know, and passing plays, he got all that. But the running, the signals, you know, I kind of just like, you know, this is what this is, this what this call right here with the O-line mean, you know, and we kind of just try to communicate more on, like, um, on his reads and, like, if he's going to pull the ball, like, we kind of try to communicate through that kind of stuff. But Chase is a – he's a fast learner and uh, is great watching them is like good it's like the man is he's good he's he's good (laughs) the man is good it's been it's just it's been good to see that like uh through the spring just watching him develop and it's like golly like once he it's like once he knew like that's like once he knew the playbook it was like man like he's zipping the ball he's getting it out quick he hands it off quick he makes decisions quick. It's like, golly, this man is something else. Man, he's good. Tell him he's good. <laughs> so, so do you think that uh, you, him, and uh, I guess the rest of your team can help uh, help out say win that Sun Belt again this year? Oh man, the Sun Belt in trouble. Them boys in trouble. Are right, you putting you're putting Colso on uh, Lu, uh, Lu, uh, Louisiana on on uh, on watch now? Putting them on watch. Oh man, they got us. They still they know even. That cold championship, man, championships still run through Boone and my eyes. All right, I, 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 I'm expecting this from you, man. You're going to – 318 yards in a Sun Bowl championship over here. So, it's, it's coming <laughs> yeah. Up, so anyway. 
But uh, you know, yeah. An- so yeah. so uh, another another game, I guess you could say that uh, I'm sure you're you're circling and everybody everybody's watching out for is week two. You know, you guys are set to play Miami, Miami. at Miami. That's gonna be a big game right there. Uh, you know, you know, App State is kind of known for this thing of being able to beat beat good teams because you guys are a good program. And so, how can uh, how can you how can you uh, beat Miami week two? You know, and how can you look into that game and prepare for it without overlooking Eastern Carolina week one? Because you never know that could be a trap game for you too. I think I think it's definitely focusing on ECU, getting through ACU. Don't look ahead. Handle that, and I don't think I and I think we pretty much all handling it. As well, as well as we should, because right now the only focus is on ECU once we start, and that's the that's kind of how it's always been. Wait for that first game, no matter who it is, ECU or JSU, it really don't matter. Like you going that's who we're gonna focus on. We're gonna give them the respect they deserve, and we're gonna go out there and execute our business. And when the next week comes, it was Miami, and we're gonna look at it just like any other game. No. And they got Alabama after us, so mm-hmm. they might not even study about worried about us. But you no, know, we gonna we gonna treat it like it's we treat every other game. It's a business week, and we gonna go in handle our business and do it the best we can. And you know, the end, the end result is gonna show. You know, and now everybody know app when it comes to them power five schools, we don't we don't come to we don't come to mess around. We need definitely yeah. no money. We we gotta win. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know a thing or two about App. I uh, I grew up a Michigan fan. You know, obviously, you know, App State had our number. They beat us, so that was always a. Uh, it's not something to be yeah. too happy about. But App State, App State's <laughs> definitely team to watch out for. But uh, I mean, I'm sure you gotta admit though, you are excited to play Miami, right? You are looking forward to that game. Oh probably. yeah, I'm ecstatic. Two weeks, two NFL stadiums. Oh yeah, that's lit. <laughs> I'm ready. You ready? All right. I, I'm. Let's see. Hopefully, I mean, you know, Chase. I'm sure. I'm sure Chase knows a thing or two about Miami too, considering a. Uh, he played in the ACC for a couple of seasons, so. Oh yeah. So I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure a lot of players. I'm sure you, him, the whole the whole team's looking forward to this game. Oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, for sure. And you know, so I guess something that's kind of looking away from the season, but kind of your career with App State, you've had a couple coaching changes that you've gone through, and obviously every coach that you you've had has been a great coach. Everyone's doing great. App, you know, they always continue to make App State a great program. But has it been difficult having to go through so many coaches changing? coaches coaching changes um i i would say yes and no um i think one thing about this team is we've handled adversity pretty well um we we all kind of like collect together as a unit um and you know still having some coaches there that you know kind of like having coach Clark now somebody who who's always been there for us always been by our side and just having such a blue collar guy who bleeds black and yellow like I think that helped a lot because um everybody respects him we all look to him he's just such a great guy and having him I think helped a lot and he surrounded us with such great people, such great coaches, people who care about us. And, you know, and I think that's the the hardest part about it was probably like losing that connection. You know, yeah. um, you, you get a, you got a guy who you connect with really well through, throughout the year and, you know, ends up leaving. You're just like, oh man, that's, that's you got to just adjust again to like somebody new, you know, kind of learn what kind of guy they are, what kind of tendencies they have. And, you know, um, how well is the connection? Does it mess up anything in the room? And I think with the uh, with all the new coaches, I mean, especially I can't really speak for every position, but I know my position. You know, we are uh, we adjusted well both, both both times, and now we got um, we had Coach Riley, who was amazing, great guy, uh, love him. Now we got Coach Haynes, who's awesome. You know, he takes takes good care of us, you know, make sure you got, you need anything, he's always checking in. And, you know, I think that's what it takes, especially, you know, coming in as a coach, I want you to know, like, let those guys know, hey, I know y'all been through this, but, you know, I'm here for you. And it's kind of like building that relationship more off the field as well, helping, because that kind of helps with the stuff, like getting in the film room and, you know, having that connection, like we can get in there, we can, we can talk more than just football. We can, 
you know, talk about life, we can talk about classes or anything else. And I think that's the, like the connection that a lot of us players have with our coaches. Yeah, definitely. That's great. You know, yeah, I think I'll obviously a lot of people know that, especially players, that it's always good to be coached by somebody that isn't just about the X's and O's, but also just mm -hmm. getting to know you as a person. So that's great to hear. But uh, kind of changing up a little bit, what's your favorite sport to, to watch or play with that's not football? Basketball. Basketball. All right. Well, we've got NBA, oh yep, NBA playoffs are on the way. You have a, you have a team you're pulling for? The Lakers is winning it all. I'm calling it now. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Look, I'm a, I'm <laughs> – I'm as big as LeBron fan as probably anybody is. I, you know, I love LeBron. Oh. What? I think he, LeBron's a guy. He's a goat. But, I, you know, I'm a Heat fan. You know, I, oh. I'm a Heat fan. So, like, last year oh, was kind of tough for man. me. I was happy LeBron got his <laughs> ring. But, like, I don't think Miami's good enough to do much right now. Nah, LeBron. LeBron need two more, three more, four more. That's my boy. Right, that's my dog. Yeah, no, Le LeBron's LeBron's a guy for sure. You think he's gonna sweep the Suns? Mm. I don't know. Them Suns pesky. They might they might win in about five or six. I give them five or six. Mm -hmm. You watching the? Uh, he, what's up? He not gonna LeBron not losing the first round though. That's oh, it. oh, definitely not. He's not. He's. I think he's going. Hopefully, he goes all the way. But I think he's going as, at least as far as the Western Conference. He's going all the way. Yeah. He in the, the playoffs. Yeah. What about the Clippers? Do you, th you think the Clippers are any good after this after this loss to the Mavericks? No, Clippers are done for. They are. <laughs> they just. I don't know what it is about them. They just. Eh, I don't think they are a good unit. They don't really work well together in my eyes. I mean, they got good players, but they don't work like. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they don't mesh well. Kawhi, Kawhi's not a, he's not a vocal leader. That's what they're missing. Yeah. Kawhi's the best yeah. piece. He's not too vocal. That's why, uh, that's why Toronto worked out well, because Lowry was always, always talking for them, sticking up, but yeah. oh, no. they need, they need to change it up a little bit. Who do you have uh, coming out of the East? Uh, I feel like, I feel like Philadelphia can do it, but at the same time, that star power with the Mets, that's just going to be, that's going to be hard to beat, because if they all clicking, it's just, that's just yeah. tough. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, I I liked Milwaukee, but I just, I don't think anybody can beat the Nets because the Nets have, like you said, so much star power. Nobody can stop them. Yeah. But I guess I guess I guess the Lakers can, but uh, that's about it, right? That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Lakers Nets for you. Oh yeah, definitely. Maybe Philly, maybe Philly, but. Definitely the Lakers in the next. I'm not. I can't. I can't trust the process, man. Ben Simmons cannot. Ben Simmons doesn't know what a three is. He's like allergic to threes. It's just, yeah, it's I hard know. To watch, man. But they play. They play good together, though. But you gotta have some firepower when it comes to that. Come to them playoffs. Yeah, definitely. You know. Uh, so you like to play? You like to play basketball? Oh yeah, I definitely hoop in my spare time. Me and my roommates. Well, most of my, a lot of my teammates will all go out and hoop a little bit with people in the community. If you had to, you had to compare yourself to a basketball player, who would it be? You already the next Steph Curry or something? Nah, I'll probably I'm like an evened out player. I don't do too much of any one thing. Um, I would say more of like a maybe more of like a Paul George, Jimmy uh. Butler type. I, sh I can shoot every now and then. I'm definitely going. But you can't perform in the playoffs. You can't perform in the clutch. That's why you're like. Oh, yeah, never mind. I got to take, never mind. I got to take Paul George out of the Pandemic, I pandemic key yeah. right there. Nah. I'm definitely, I'm definitely like a Jimmy Buckets. <laughs> Jimmy Buckets? All right. Well, he wasn't too much of a bucket today, man. I was upset without that. You, you need yeah, to take a spot, bro. You need to take a spot on the team. I'm telling you, hey, when lose. <laughs> I hope not. I know. Bro. We I hooped, know. uh. We hooped like right before every all the classes and stuff came out. I left with like a ten and old streak. I ain't, I ain't lost. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. Ten and <laughs> Hey, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You got my team. You got my roommate. Ten and old. All right. Sure. You should. Uh, you should walk on a basketball team or something. Then if you're if you're so good, you can go play with that Jake Cole in uh, Rwanda, this African. <laughs> no, nah, I I did. I I did want to play basketball in college before. Like I. But football is just I'm I've always played football, so but I did like at one point, like I think my sophomore year, I was like, man, I want to go to college hoop. Did you 
Did you get any looks ever or anybody talking to you about it? Nah, because, man, I ended up getting hurt, like, my sophomore year during football, and, like, it kind of just messed me up that year. And then my junior year and senior year, I was just, like, a role player. Like, I mean, I was a starter, but, like, I wasn't, like, the main bucket getter. I was more of a rebounding, dunking type person. Right, so, you're, so you're like Russell Westbrook without the without the points, basically. Hell no, nah, I give you I give you some buckets here now and then, but just like I wouldn't like the offense wouldn't run through me. Now defense, I'm I'm the vocal point. So you're like all right, so you're like Draymond Green. I I I I, I just <laughs> that's all I got for you, man. That's all I got. For you, man. Not Draymond. Definitely <laughs> not Draymond. Come on, bro. Come on, you're not gonna poke out LeBron's eye or something. Nah, I was a. I'm a good. I'm a. I'm a clean player. <laughs> that's, that's what. That's what they all say. Bro. That's what they all say. <laughs> and, then, and then you're over here hurting people. Nah, I ain't gonna hurt nobody now. <laughs> weird. Um, do you have a do you follow an NFL team or anything like that? Uh, I don't know because I want to play in the NFL. So like, I kind of like, I kind of just watch it, no. But like, I, I used to be big on the Ravens. I mean, I, I guess I'm still kind of like on the Ravens. I like them. I like the Ravens. Mm-hmm. Ray, I liked them back when they had the Ray Lewis and all them. But then again, you know, I like, I don't know, as a kid, I was just like, dang, I love football. So I was just kind of like, oh, the Chargers, with Damian Thomas. It's kind of yeah. like I was just looking at players and it was like, um, I ain't like the Vikings, but I did like Adrian Peterson. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I have no yeah. idea how he's still in the league, Adrian Peterson. Yeah, that man built different. Marshawn Lynch was good. I loved him. Mm-hmm. So I was I used to love watching the Seahawks, but I I think Ravens and the Seahawks I used to just kind of like watch them all the time, and then Michael Vick back in the day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think that you're kind of obligated to uh, like Tennessee a little bit now since you're uh, since your boys on the on the Titans uh, there. Oh yeah, I definitely yeah I definitely I hey, Tennessee like that too. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. Derrick Henry, my boy Darrington. Yeah, definitely. I heard I heard they might get Julio, so uh, you know you might. <laughs> I, he, he might be going to the Patriots too, though. I, I hope not, but yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I think he's I think he's bound for the Colts, but who knows? That's a yeah story for another day, right there. Do you do you have any uh, Super Bowl predictions? I ain't even gonna lie to you. I don't. Uh, gotcha. Just say, just say, uh, just say the, it's just, always just say the Giants. Ah, uh, heck no! Ain't no way. Come on. Tell I can't see the Giants going. I really want I really want the Ravens to win that thing. They got they got a division. Yeah. The Browns on the come up too though. Uh, oh Baker's uh, Baker's pretty okay, I guess. He's he's pretty meh, let's say the least in my opinion. Yeah. That's my yeah. sleeper team. What the Browns? Yeah. You like the Ravens, but, team you, I, but you also think the Browns are gonna do well. It's not this isn't adding up too much right now. I know they're in the same division, but like it's like I don't know. I was like everybody always hating on the Browns, but like I looked at them like I would always watch their games. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with them. They just just losing. <laughs> then they, and then, oh, no, then they it's winning. It's going on sixteen. Nothing wrong with them. Hey, and then they start winning. Everybody was like, oh snap, the Browns. I'm like, nah, nah, y'all ain't like the Browns. Remember? All right, all right. Well, when uh when they move off of Cream Hunter and uh, Nick Chubb, you can you can go take over uh, take over as running back over there. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, I guess my final question I got for you, man, is uh, you know, if you could tell anybody just one thing about yourself, you know, whether you know as a person rather not just a football player, what do you want them to know? Uh, I'm the type of person that's always gonna keep it real with them. Um, give them anything I got. You know, always be positive. And you know, I'm the type of person that's just. I'm always going to be there for somebody. Uh, I always try to make you laugh. I always try to make you smile. Something, you know, I just like to be there for people and try to give people encouragement any type of way I can. So um, lots of fun and energy that I try to give out every day. Gotcha, man. Well, that's, that's great to hear, bro. And uh, I, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, it was great talking to you. Yeah, you too, man. Appreciate you for having me. Yeah, man, of course.